when families send their children to college, they already are a little scared, you know, hoping everything goes well. They're hoping mm-hmm. that everything taught them at home, they're mm-hmm. able to use when they go away. But then if something does happen, what is the guilt that happens with the parents? How can the parents support? And I just wonder what resources or help has the parents reached out to to psychologically deal with what's going on, what happened to their son, but also how to help their son heal. This is trauma. We don't heal from trauma. We always remember. Now we can get the time. And so that's what comes to my mind as it relates to the family. How are they dealing with this scenario? Oh, my goodness. And, Daryl, I'm looking at an article that I read on this situation by Allison Wilt, W-I-L-T-Z, folks. And she writes for Medium. And she has an article called White Students Commit Hate Crimes. They Should Learn About Racism. And she ties all of this to the failure of schools to actually be able to, uh, you know, to instruct students about race and all these laws that have been banning the teaching uh, around, you know, racism. And she says something, uh, you know, uh, prosecutor, that I thought was just amazing. She said that data, based on data collected from 2018 to 2022, the FBI concluded that hate crimes in schools, schools have doubled, doubled, and black students are the most common target. And yet in some states, teachers are prohibited from discussing race and racism in the classroom. So we're left with this painful irony. Oh, my goodness, folks. When we think about this, I want to know, you know, as we look at this situation and what we're talking about right now, what can we do? You know, I love your uh, point, you know, Attorney uh, Pryor, that we should be looking at uh, possibly calling on the Justice Department to do a federal hate crimes investigation. I like that. Uh, I'm also wondering what else do you think? people ought to be doing to pursue this because this is a horrific instance and sometimes when people read of these situations they get emboldened they say why can't i do it too if uh, if i can get away with it what do right. you think we should do no i i think uh, great points and and, and it, it is true um we've noticed that there's been an all-time rise in uh, hate crimes um particularly since 2016 and we all can correlate or make a direct correlation what happened in November of 2016 um, ah. and what happened thereafter, um, we saw a spike in hate crimes across the board for all groups, ethnic groups in this country, um, and it, it hasn't gone down since. And then also we've noticed the proliferation or the the um, higher number of hate crimes that are happen, happening amongst our youngsters in grade school, elementary, middle school, and up into high school. Yeah. And so we have to really work hard to combat this, to educate our children in the school system. But obviously you have states like my state, the state of Florida, where they have anti-woke acts, where they're taking books out, where they're trying to teach that yes. it was a benefit to us as a people um, as opposed to an evil in this country. And so we really have to fight this on all fronts. But in order to bring attention to this particular issue and what is extremely troubling to me as a member of law enforcement, as a chief law enforcement officer in my district, as a district attorney, as a prosecutor, What's problematic is that there's not enough information for us to even say whether or not this was a hate crime or at least to give a benefit of a doubt to the school. And so my problem is why didn't you allow law enforcement officials as a school to come in and at least do an independent investigation? So if you thought it wasn't a hate crime or if you thought there wasn't a crime here, at least it's documented and we know as a society. And so I would encourage the students out there at Gettysburg, the citizens out there, reach out to the local elected officials, go to city commissions, county commission um, meetings, reach out, write letters to the local DA's office, write letters to the local law enforcement agency, and even the state agency, the attorney general's office, the governor's office, um, and really bring light to this issue to ask for an independent investigation in this matter. 
because it just seems that that has not been done here. And we don't have enough information to know what exactly happened. And so that is the key here. We need to get some form of an independent investigation in there so we can get to the bottom of this. Amen. And, you know, Mikhail, I, I wonder if with the uh, you know, Pennsylvania State Conference of the NAACP, the Youth and College Division is, is, is yeah, I think it's is part of, uh, I guess, still under your watch. Is there any possibility that you can connect with the NAACP and try to find out information with, with regards to what's going on in this situation? Or maybe you already have. Absolutely. So this is actually the highest priority right now. Of course, with the election being so close, we're still pushing our GOTV effort. Um, yeah. But this happening with a a young black student, like you said, falls right under my jurisdiction, if you will. So even though the family has um, reached out to, I guess, the Greater Gettysburg chapter, mm-hmm. we are still going to be collaborating with them, seeing how we can support our students Good. around the how we can support the family, um, and even if we need to, how we can pull up to Gettysburg College. It's just what we do. Um, and I think that this situation is going, or no, I'm going to reiterate, I know that this situation is directly going to be addressed across the association and across other organizations that I work with as well. Thank you. And as we are in the closing part of our show, can you say, you know, one final comment to everybody listening and tell them how they can get in touch with you? Michaela. Yes. Yeah, so you can get on get in touch with me at K K A Y, the number four P A on Instagram. You can also reach me via email at P-A, youth, at, at gmail.com. All right. Thank you right. so much. Go ahead, Daryl. And the same and the same for you, uh, Jaden, your, your your closing words. And how do people get in contact with you? They they hear this brother that's talking about, you know, right, the president, they, they want to know, how do I reach him? How can I get him to come come talk, <laughs> talk on my show? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, first and foremost, definitely want to thank you all for having just closing comments. You know, I would say that it, be empowered. You know, when you get out there and you see incidents that occur on your institution and you have a concern, speak up. It's just like when we take our time to make sure we're registered to vote, we also need to actually get out there and vote. So it's important to not only start to have these conversations, but that it's our job to empower our community to actually make sure we make a difference and we we make an impact after we see an issue or a concern. But I would just say uh, thank you for having me again. The best way you can get in contact with me, I'm found on social media at uh, The J Donald, so T-H-E-J-D-O-N-A-L-D. And if you'd like to reach out uh, and contact me via email, my email address is the Jaden Donald, uh, T H E J A Y D E N D O N A L D at gmail dot com. Again, thank you both for having me. Uh, thank you so thank much, uh, Jaden, for for being here. And uh, Attorney Pryor, how do people get in contact with you? And uh, what what are your closing words? Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me, uh, Daryl and Barbara. This has been a, a great conversation. And also, thank you to the students. Thank you for your courage. And also, yeah. um, our, our esteemed doctor here, thank you so much. Um, I want to just leave some information. If you are a victim of a hate crime or if you know someone that is a victim of a hate crime and you see it in real time, call 911. Um, and if not, call the non-emergency hotline for local law enforcement and report the hate crime. Um, Sometimes local law enforcement officers don't know that hate crimes are actually on the books, and so they may just charge it as a battery or attempted murder without applying the appropriate hate crime um, enhancer, where a lot of states have hate crime enhancers that make the charge a lot more severe. So please, if you see a hate crime or you're experiencing a hate crime, please call 911 or call the local law enforcement officials and let them know, I believe a hate crime was committed, and tell them as to why. Um, If you want to know more information, I have a hate crimes unit. I have one of a few hate crimes units um, throughout the United States. We got a grant from the Shepherd uh, Bird Collective through the Department of Justice. We've received nearly a million dollars in funding to create our hate crimes. 
unit. And wow. so if you want to learn more about that unit, go to my website, BrowardSAO.com. That's BrowardSAO.com. Or you can look me up on Twitter under Harold F. Pryor, like Richard Pryor, but I'm no of no relation to Richard, Harold <laughs> F. Pryor. Or you can go to Facebook or Instagram and look me up, Harold F. Pryor, Broward State Attorney, Harold F. Pryor on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or go to my website at BrowardSAO.com to learn how we can combat against hate crimes. Thank you so much, Attorney Pryor. And Dr. Frederick, you know, it's only appropriate that we give you the last word from this panel because we have a community that's dealing with anxiety over this incident, depression over this incident, you know, anger over this incident, grief over this incident. Can you give them some healing words? What are your closing words and how do they get in contact with you? Yeah, thank you so much for that. My closing words and comments is that racism, discrimination, and oppression is real. It can happen to anyone at any point, but help is out there when you speak your truth. So if you're ever experiencing anything or you're not sure, talk about it so that someone can validate that, yeah, this is what happened, this is the truth, and let's move on that. People can get in touch with me via telephone or text at 301-257-3886. I also have an email address. This is A-S-K-R-O-N, that is A-S-K-B-R-J-O-A-N-N-E, at yahoo.com. I have a website, www.jfl, so Joanne Fedrick Live Counseling, C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G, dot org. And then we also have the book called Copology that is available on Amazon that helps people cope when they experience these type of trauma. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Fred. We appreciate all of our guests that were here today. Uh, Jamise uh, McClinton, who's the Cincinnati National uh, Coalition, uh, National Panhellenic uh, Council uh, uh, President, we appreciate her being here. Appreciate uh, Jaden Donald. We appreciate uh, Michaela for being here. Appreciate Dr. Frederick for being here, and certainly appreciate uh, 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 Attorney Ford for for being here as well. Folks, folks, folks. I say it, Barbara, and I'll say it again. <clears throat> There's a time for a bumblebee and a time for a hornet. You know what's happening at Gettysburg College is not the time for the bumblebee, where they get upset and they just buzz around, buzz around, don't do anything. It's time to be that hornet. You bother that that nest. So hornets, you're going to get stung. There's going to be a response. That's what we need from this community right now. We need a response. We need the university to stand up and disclose what's going on so that the proper <clears throat> action can be taken. Folks, <clears throat> it's election time. It's time to get off the sidewalk, get into the streets, make your way to your ballot box when, you're, when, it's, when it's time in your area, and cast your vote. Barbara, I can't think of anything more important to show the importance of down-ballot voting than the position of the prosecutor as, as uh, Attorney Ford laid it out today and what could be happening in Gettysburg, Barbara. And you're on mute, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget to meet us in Pittsburgh. We'll see you Saturday. Go to tjcoalition.org, tjcoalition.org, and see all of our upcoming events. We welcome you, the public. It's time to get our vote on. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you at the voting box, folks. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 News Talk 1450 WOLAM, where information is power. The preceding program was paid for by Barbara Arnwine. You want to feel important. You want to be part of something bigger, something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel like you belong. We know. We felt that way too. And that's why we did something about it. We aren't just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you, but our part-time service in the Army National Guard means we get to be more. When our communities are in need, we get the chance to stand up and do something about it. We get to serve in our own region and help the people we call neighbors. From the coasts of Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New Jersey. The small communities of Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. To the dense forests of New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York, and historic Washington, D.C., 
We are here for our hometowns. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Sponsored by the D.C. Army National Guard. Aired by the Maryland, D.C., Delaware Broadcasters Association and this station. 1450 WOL, Washington, D.C. WDCJ, Washington 95.9. WOL. 